G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be formally proving the binomial expansion formula. So in case you don't know what that means, that means I'm going to be dealing with x plus y to the power of n. And I'm going to be showing you what this all expands out into. Now before I get started, I just want to um, allude to the fact that you probably know how to solve this already for small values of n. For example, I'm sure you'd be able to figure out x plus y to the power of 2. That's just the case of when n equals 2, and I'm sure you'd be able to tell me that's just going to be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, right? Likewise, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out x plus y to the power of 3. I won't write it all out, but it'll be x cubed plus a whole bunch of stuff in the middle plus y cubed, right? But the whole point of this is to figure out what is a generalized expression for x plus y to the power of n. How do you figure this guy out? Right, so that's going to be the purpose of this video. And the way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to say x plus y to the n is going to be equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed plus dot 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 plus a to the n x to the n. Now you might be saying, well, where did this even come from? I don't know what this expands out into, but I'm going to assume it takes the form of this, right? Where I'm assuming x is a variable and y is just a constant just here. So I'm going to assume when you expand this out, it's going to fall into this form. And under this assumption, we'll be able to prove that it does fall into this form and we'll be able to find out what the values of a0, a1, a2, a3 are. So if we figure out all these coefficients, then we can find out what this thing expands into. Okay, well, before I even get started, I just want to um, kind of flesh this out a little bit more. I'm going to actually write this as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot dot dot. And I'm going to choose some intermediate term in here, which I will call a to the k, um, x to the k plus dot 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 plus a to the n, a, a subscript n, x to the n. Right, so a, a, a k xk is just like a term in the middle here somewhere, okay? And you'll see why I've chosen to write it this way shortly. Now the way I'm going to, to solve this, right, the way I'm going to find the coefficients of these guys is I'm actually going to differentiate. And you'll understand why I'm going to differentiate shortly. But let's just consider what happens if I were to differentiate both sides of the equation once. So let's say if I differentiate, so I take, I take ddx on the left-hand side and I take ddx on the right-hand side, what do I get? Well, on the left-hand side, it'll be quite simple. We just get n times x plus y to the n minus 1 times by the derivative in here, which is just 1, right? Don't forget, x is a variable, y is a constant. That's one of the base assumptions for this formula. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to be differentiating this too. Well, a naught is just a constant, right? So that means this will turn into 0. What will this one be? It'll just be a1. What will this one be? It'll just be 2a2x plus, and it goes on for a long time, all the way until I get to here, and this will be k times a subscript k x to the k minus 1, and then it goes on again for a while until we get to here, and that's going to be n times a to the n x to the n minus 1. I hope that fits in there. Um, and you might be wondering, okay, well, well, how does this get us any closer to solving this problem? And at the moment, it isn't quite obvious. But let's consider what happens if instead of differentiating once, we were to differentiate k times. So let me write that down. What happens if we were to differentiate k times? And, and just so you know, the game plan here, in case you can't see it, and I don't expect you guys to see it, but the game plan here is to find out what this coefficient is going to be when we differentiate k times, right? And then, and then we'll be able to play around with the left-hand side and do some math magic, okay? So let's do it. Um, what happens when we differentiate k times? Well, on this side, we're going to get n, and then it's going to be at times n minus 1, and then it's going to be times by n minus 2, and then it's going to be times by n minus 3, right, when we keep differentiating up to k times. So that we're, let's write that out. It'll be n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, and I think you get the idea, and it goes on and on until you've differentiated k times. But notice that because there's a lag of 1 here, it's actually going to be n, it's not going to be n minus k, it's going to be n minus k plus 1. Right, and, and that's because there's a lag here. I just got that from pattern seeking. I differentiated once, so there was just an n minus zero here, and there was an n minus one here. So that's how I knew it was gonna be n minus k plus one. And then we're timesing that by x plus y to the power of n minus k, because we've differentiated k times, it's minus k now. Um, 
And that's the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Well, we can safely say that everything up to this point is going to turn into zero when we differentiate k times. So let's deal with this term first. It's going to be um, k times k minus 1 times k minus 2. And it's going to keep going all the way until we differentiate k minus time, k times, which is going to go all the way to 1, right? And then we've got these terms left, which is going to be a subscript k times by x to the k minus k, right? And I, I could write the rest, but I don't have enough space. And you'll find out it's not very important to write the rest. So I'll just write a dot, dot, dot there, right? To show that there are additional terms, but I, I, just, haven't, I just haven't bothered to evaluate them. Okay, you'll show um, what I can do with this later on. Okay, now let's clean this up a little bit. I notice we can do some good bookkeeping here. I realize that right now we've got a really uncomfortable expression just here. And I want to see if there's a way we can tidy it up. Fortunately, we can tidy it up. If we multiply this expression just here by n minus k factorial divided by n minus k factorial. If we multiply this term by that, you'll see that it cleans up nicely. And that's because when you combine this term with this numerator, you, this, this actually fully completes all the way to 1, making this numerator nice and easy. It just turns into n factorial. So let's write that down. This will turn into, on the numerator, n factorial quite nicely. And you'll see why. It, 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 you get all the way to n minus k minus k plus 1, and then it continues to n minus k to n minus k minus 1 all the way to 1, and that's how you complete that to n factorial. And in the denominator, we're still left with this pesky guy. It'll be, it'll be n minus k factorial, just like that. Okay, now we've still got this term here, can't do anything about that. So this will be x plus y to the n minus k. Okay, um, and on the right hand side, what can we do? Well, I'm still going to ignore these guys, which I've left off before. But I'm going to realize that this right here can be expressed as k factorial like that. And then I'm going to times that by a subscript k times by x to the k minus k, or if you like, I'm just going to write that as 1, so I'll just leave that guy off. And now don't forget, we still have a whole bunch of other terms here as well, which I haven't evaluated. But you'll see why, right now, why I haven't even bothered to evaluate them. And that's because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to write in pink, I'm going to equate, I'm going to equate coefficients of x to the power of 0. So basically, I'm going to I'm going to equate the coefficients of x to the power of 0, which is this guy just here, with the coefficient of x to the power of 0 from this expression just here, from this expression just here. So what are we going to get on the left hand side? Well, the coefficient of x to the power of 0 happens when we expand this out and we only multiply the y terms, right? Notice, in case you don't fully understand that, go back to here. The coefficient of x to the power of 0 in this expression, right, was when we multiplied y three times with each other. So it's going to be the same thing here. So if we evaluate this, it's going to be, um, and I'll, I'll choose blue, why not? It's going to be n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times by y to the power of n minus k, right? That's the coefficient of x to the power of 0. And on the right-hand side, we, are, we already know we evaluated the coefficient of x to the power of 0 was k factorial times by a to the k. All the other terms here are, are, are coefficients of x to the power of 1 or x to the power of 2 or x to the power of 3, etc., etc. So this is the only coefficient of x to the power of 0. Okay, now we can solve for a to the k, a, a subscript k, by dividing by k factorial, and we can easily say that a to the a subscript k is going to be n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times by k factorial, right? Um, times by y to the n minus k. So, um, so <laughs> already we found the coefficient. Um, of our a to the k value. We found this guy just here, and that's really, really crucial, and you'll see why right now. Well, because we found the um, coefficient called a subscript k, we actually know the kth term. We know what this is, we know what this whole thing is going to be equal to now. We know that a subscript k times by x to the k, which is the kth term, is going to be n factorial 
divided by n minus k factorial times by k factorial times by y to the n minus k times by x to the k. This, this right here is a really useful formula because, and you might not realize it straight away, but this actually tells us what this whole expansion is equal to. We can find out what a subscript zero is by plugging in k is equal to zero. We know what a one is by plugging in k is equal to one. We know this by plugging in k is equal to two. So we've actually found the whole expansion by simply generalizing it, by solving it for a subscript k. And in case that doesn't make complete sense, let me let me also write it in orange here. We found out that the whole expansion now is going to be x plus y to the n is going to be the sum of all of these terms. So it's going to be the sum when k is equal to zero for k is equal from k is equal to zero to k is equal to n of n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial times y to the n minus k times by x to the k. We found the whole expansion like this, like this just here. And that's beautiful, right? I mean, you might think this is quite ugly, but I think it's a beautiful formula because we've generalized the expression just here. And so I, I've, I've boxed these off because they're also quite useful because it, it means that we can, if we were asked to find, okay, what's the, what's the 52nd term in this expansion just here? We can find it. We just plug in k is equal to 57, right? So. These are the three formulas which I reckon you should use. This is the ultimate answer to our, our initial problem we proposed. But these three formulas are really useful in the binomial expansion. I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.